Hi, and welcome to Golfing Partners YouTube channel, where you'll find a series of golf lessons that cover all aspects of your game. And be sure to hit the subscription button to get notification of all new lesson uploads, as well as the swing drills and practice games I'll be uploading. And with each lesson, take out information that you feel is relevant to you and your golf game and take that to your practice session to maximise value. And for further detail of each lesson, take a look at my website www.golfingpartner.com where you'll also find an array of swing drills and practice games to play so it will help you to add structure to your practice. Please enjoy. Within this instruction I'm going to take you through four key areas concerning posture. The first area is understanding balance and we're going to break balance into two headings. We're going to look at static balance and then we're going to look at balance in motion. The second point I'm going to talk to you about is a term I like to use called vertical balance and that's understanding a balance point from the ground that flows upwards. The third point is the importance of understanding the spine angle in relation to the vertical balance point. And then the fourth point I'm going to talk to you about is the term sequence and the importance of understanding a chain of motion that works in an order that starts at the ground and flows up through the posture, down the arms, through the hands and should finish at the club face at the moment of impact. So please follow these instructional points through in the order that they are given. So within the term balance, there are six headings that we're going to look at. The first two are quite obvious. So we're going to look at the weight distribution between the left foot and the right foot. Now, because we're using a seven iron, we're keeping this to quite a, a basic instruction. The weight distribution is even across both feet, which we covered in the stance instruction. So we've got 50% of the weight on the right foot, 50 on the left foot. When we look at other shots, the weight distribution can change. So whether that's using different clubs or looking to de deliver the club in different ways, we can move the weight about across the feet to help change the way the club face is delivered to the ball at the moment of impact. Now the second point of balance, which again we covered in the stance, is the distribution of weight between toes and heels. So we want the weight to run across the balls of the feet, which again we covered in the stance instruction. So we're looking for the weight to be running across the last lace hole in the shoes. There are four more headings that I'd like to make you aware of. There's balance between upper body and lower body. So think of a divide across your hips. So we're looking to create a balanced posture position with the lower half of the body and also a relaxed posture position with the upper half of the body. There's also balance between the left and the right side of the body. So that's four balance headings already. The fifth balance heading is the balance between arms. We want the arms to be positioned in a relaxed but balanced manner. And then the sixth balance heading, which is the all important one, is the balance in the hands, which again we covered in the grip routine. So we're ensuring that the hand position is square, but also the grip pressure in the hands is light. So with these six balance headings, we're creating a foundation, a relaxed and balanced foundation for the body to move around. So there's no tension at all in the way the body has been positioned to suit the shot, the club and the lie. Just want to turn our attention now to the stick that I placed on the ground and I've now placed my feet onto the stick and this stick is highlighting balance that runs across my feet and in particular between heels and toes. 
So now the balance is set across the balls of my feet, which is a point just below the first lace hole on either shoe. The next thing I'd like to look at is a term that I like to use in coaching called vertical balance. And in particular, a point that that vertical balance finishes at. So the starting point of vertical balance is the ground where the stick is positioned across my feet and it runs vertically upwards through my posturing to a point into my spine, which now takes me to a second term I'd like to talk to you about, which is commonly known as spine angle. So spine angle is the angle between hips and my back. Now the angle in the spine can change depending on the type of club we're using. So if it was a longer club, say the driver, then the angle would be slightly higher. If it was a shorter club, say a pitching wedge, then the angle would be slightly lower. But positioning the spine correctly to suit the shot, the club and the lie is very important. So now I've created a balanced posture position. Just want to spend a moment to talk about the importance of the vertical line of balance. To highlight balance, once again I've positioned a stick on the ground and I'm standing on the stick so that the stick is highlighting weight distribution between toes and heels. So that I'm now standing on this stick with the stick running under the balls of my feet. I've got a second stick that I'm going to use to highlight balance from the ground. So this is the vertical balance line. Now because the weight is evenly balanced across both feet between left and right foot, the vertical line of balance now is positioned in the centre of my stance. So it starts at the ground and flows upwards through my pelvis, through my sternum to a point into my spine angle. Now this vertical line can be moved at address, so we can position the weight further into the left foot, being as I'm a right-handed player, and it's important again that the, the vertical line stays in place. Or we could position the weight into slightly into the right foot. Again, we must maintain the vertical line of balance. A point that we must avoid is a, a breaking of this vertical line so if we were to push the hips to the right and the upper body to the left, the line gets distorted. Or if we get the reverse, where we push the hips to the left and the upper body to the right, the line gets distorted. So when we look at motion, the body turning into the backswing and returning, if the vertical line is distorted, it's very difficult for us to turn backwards or turn forwards. This now creates a stable foundation of angles and lines that run through the posture position that give the body a foundation to turn around when we look at body motion. And as the body rotates around this foundation of angles and lines, the hands and arms connect to the body and the hands and arms are moving freely into space the body has created enabling the hands to control the club face and deliver the club face back to the ball with feel. So we're able to feel through the hands the control in the club face at the point of delivery. Now I'd like to talk about the term sequence motion and that term relates to an order of movement that we make when we swing a club. Now every shot that we play, every swing that we make has some form of sequence motion and we want the sequencing to work in the correct order which starts at the ground, flows through the body, down the arms, through the hands and should finish at the club face when we deliver the club face to the ball at impact. I'd also recommend you take time to look at my website www.golfingpartner.com that gives further detail to this area of your golf game. You'll also find a series of practice drills where I've created practice techniques that cover position and also swing motion that relate to any area of your golf game. There's also a practice games area where I've created a series of games that you can use within practice that will help you to develop your golf skills and also help to measure the practice you are doing. 
and take time to look at other areas of Golfing Partner that are available to you, such as the online lesson tab, where you'll find an array of video tutorials to view that cover all aspects of the game. So whether you're looking to learn a part of the game or improve part of that game, you'll find something that will benefit you. Take a look at my unique fault finder that's been designed to give qualified explanation to problematical ball flights and ball strikes. And finally, take a look at the V1 lessons I have available where you're able to upload video of your own golf swing, send it through to me where I'll critique the clip, give qualified feedback and suggest practice techniques that will help to improve that area of your golf game. And please note, within the three, six and 12 month sign up packages, you will get a number of V1 lessons within each package. Please enjoy.